Yo guys, I hope you're all well and rested. So today is the morning after the night before and yesterday was supposed to be a devastating day in British history where over a hundred right-wing fascist thugs were supposed to be marching all throughout the UK and to all intents and purposes it didn't happen because the intel was wrong or maybe it was deliberately wrong I don't know people but thank you everyone for not going out and pushing through with all of the scaremongering etc etc that was said yesterday so yeah remember we want to protest but we want to do it peacefully people we won't don't want to start getting involved in thuggery as the media has said just so that we can literally bring their viewpoints to life what we want to do is to get our message heard and to get it heard through the right channels so guys this morning Sir Keir Starmer I keep thinking of the word stammer for some reason but Sir Keir Starmer has commented about yesterday's actions or non-actions let's listen to what he had to say last night I think the fact we didn't see the disorder that was feared is because we had police deployed in numbers in the right places giving reassurance to communities we were able to demonstrate the criminal justice system working speedily so yesterday you saw the sentencing of individuals who've been involved in disorder days ago some of them getting sentences as long as three years that sent a very powerful message but i also think that the work that's been done jointly to reassure our communities um, is becoming more effective. Now, it's important that we don't let up here, and that's why later on today I'll have another COBRA meeting with law enforcement, with senior police officers, to make sure that we reflect on last night, but also plan for the coming days. So, Sir Keir Starmer just said he's going to have, or he's going to organise another COBRA meeting later on today. So, I think I'm going to do a video about COBRA and what it's all about, and the whys and the reasons of why we're having so many of these meetings but I also sort of got a bit of a glint in his eye about how speedily and how happy he is that people are being punished yes if people break the law they should be punished and they should fe feel the full force of the law but there seems to be another two-tier system here people because people have been arrested charged tried and jailed within days where there are other people throughout this country doing other heinous crimes and a lot of them aren't even being charged then definitely not being hauled up in front of the courts for so many reasons and one of the reasons is there isn't enough prison space so there's a bit of a two-faced two-tier element here people and yeah I really am a little bit knocked about this people this is one of the reasons I'm a bit knocked as well so everyone should face a fair trial but everyone who does something that breaks the law should really go through the system of the judiciary system and it shouldn't be speeded up or slowed down for individual cases people everyone the law should be fair and it should be seen seen to be fair and at the moment i'm not thinking or seeing it to be fair people Things may have died down, but we have seen violent scenes and, and riots for the best part of a week. Looking across policing and government, would you really say that this has been a success? And what are the lessons that you've learned? What would this government do differently in the future? The most important lesson is for those involving themselves in disorder. Because what we've seen is that those that are being arrested now, numbered in their hundreds, many have been charged, some already in court, and now a number of individuals sentenced to uh, terms of imprisonment. That is a very important message to those involved in disorder. And I say it again, anybody involving themselves in disorder, whatever they claim as their motive, will feel the full force of the law. So he said anyone who's involved in disorder will feel the full force of the law. So I definitely would love to see the law being blind to who you are, where you're at. If you break the law, then you should feel the force of the law. So 
we want to see it being meted out equally on all sides, people. Paul and I report that, uh, uh, repeat that, because we need to make sure that in the coming days we can give the necessary reassurance to our communities, many of whom have been talking to some this morning, uh, are very anxious about the situation. If we have indeed turned a corner and seen an end to the violence, is now the time to engage with the underlying tensions that are in communities over the issue of immigration? The first priority is safety and security of our communities. And uh, yes, last night was much better than was expected, uh, but we are not going to um, you know, give up on our efforts here. That's why it's very important that I continue my discussions coordinating um, with law enforcement, with police leaders, to make sure we've got the right officers in the right place, to keep pushing on the criminal justice response. I was very keen that we were able to demonstrate uh, that if you're involved in disorder, uh, within days you'll be in the criminal mm. justice system and some people starting long terms of imprisonment. That needs to continue, and so that is my sole focus. Oh, Thank you. oh, oh, oh. So, Sir Keir Starmer just had this long-winded response to the question of, now that elements seem to have subsided, should we start to have discussions and look at the root causes of what's been going on the last few days, which has obviously got its root causes in issues that have been really unaddressed or not addressed appropriately over the last few months and years even. So Keir Starmer just said, no, he's not interested in looking at the root cause. What he's interested in people is driving forward with this agenda. But I just want to rewind that and just, just check that out again. So just bear with me, people. Bear with me. If we have indeed turned a corner and seen an end to the violence, is now the time to engage with the underlying tensions that are in communities over the issue of immigration? So the underlying tensions that are within communities over immigration. This is the question that Sir Keir Starmer was asked and he came back with a long-winded response basically saying he's not interested in the underlying tensions. That is what I heard or got from this. Maybe I've got it wrong. Let me know down here in the comment section. I think that's really important because what a lot of us are saying and I call us the sil silent common sense majority is there are underlying causes, root causes, to a lot of these issues that haven't been addressed and will keep festering and will keep coming to the surface. This is why we need to get our letters done, get the petitions done, and to get this talked about in the Parliament. But Sir Keir Starmer has just said, basically, he's not interested. He's got his agenda, he's going to roll forward with it. And there was something I saw earlier and which is quite strange on this point as well, people, because Sakir is quoted as saying, change will only happen if you vote for it. So I've said, well, if we wish to vote for change and for you at least to listen to our concerns, then we will get those petitions written and we will see if you listen, if you listen and you debate these concerns in Parliament, people. You are supposed to do that. You're supposed to debate our concerns in Parliament. Or is this a fait accompli? And you've used recent events that have fallen into your lap to implement a long planned agenda. So people, get those letters and petitions written, raise your concerns, and let's do it within the political framework. Because if we get to those numbers or we or we get to the position where we hit the threshold for our concerns to be heard in Parliament and they're not, then the whole world can see what's happening, people. So we need to do everything legally above board within the framework. So anyone who's out there who knows how to work within the framework legally to get our questions and concerns heard, Please, let's start to do that, people, because this is meant to be a democracy. So a democracy is meant to be one where it listens to the people and then we can we can literally debate. And this is the main thing. Get everyone around the table, talk about the issues, talk about the concerns and talk about how we can go forward in the future. Because right now, everyone from every single side is not happy. And when you have all of the people 
not happy, that is a recipe for absolute no, it's, it's chaos. So literally we need to get people around the table speaking. I mean, what is the harm in getting people together to talk? Because at least you are beginning to understand what the issues are on all sides. That's all I'm going to say, people. I was very disappointed just listening to that because Keir Starmer was asked right towards the end of that interview, are you now ready to listen? And to me, he basically said no. And to me, that is so disappointing. It really is. Anyway, guys, make certain you look after yourselves, you look after each other. Guys, whatever we do, whatever our thoughts are, make certain that the thoughts and the deeds match and the thoughts and the deeds are legal, lawful and respectful people. We are being labelled in such a manner that people will think that we are thugs, etc, etc. Let's prove that we're not. Let's prove that we have legitimate concerns. Let's prove that we want to go and use the framework that is out there for us. And let's just hope that they come back and listen to us people. That is the first signs of a great democracy. And we want to make this a great democracy. So guys, have a great day. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Make certain you come back to the next urban bars reaction guys <laughs>